everybody so today I'm going to show you how to make a vase or a form that has a narrower top and a wider base so I'm just pressing this porcelain onto here basically to avoid my tripod from falling over but it's pretty snug on there before I go I'm, and then I'm going to wet it and show you all the kind of basic steps before I find that my um, porcelain clay really wants to jump off a little bit more than the stoneware in the beginning, so I give it some extra pressure down below before I compress it. You can pretty much do that with any clay body if you have that issue. I'm going to cone it up. as possible. I'm just going to rest my hand and ensure it's as good as it gets before I go ahead and open it up. With the more like bottle and vase forms, I usually give myself a little bit of a thicker vase so, or base so that it doesn't um, topple over. So just go a little bit thicker, at least like more of a foot to add some weight. You don't want it crazy chunky. Now I'm going to bring it out. And I'm keeping the diameter at the bottom fairly narrow because I do want it to go up. I'm not wanting to accidentally make this into a bowl. Compressing my bottom as I do that before I go for height. And then I'm just going to collar this in a tiny bit so that it's easier for me to keep it narrow. focused on my first throw, just kind of evening it up a little bit, keeping it in a very conal shape. I'm going to try to grab some of that from the bottom. And I want to make sure in the beginning I don't get my top section too thin. So I'm going to keep that a little bit thicker than I might typically. You don't want to keep it too thick to where it's going to add extra weight, but you don't want it so thin to where it's going to be easy for it to get structurally compromised. So now my other throw here is focused a little bit more on form, so I'm going to bring it in, kind of building a waistline, and try to keep this from flaring out. I want to make sure all of the pulling's done on the bottom before I activate that top part, because the more I kind of bring it in and back out, can cause some structural issues so try to keep it narrow even though it is tricky to do that and get in there and when I'm 
throwing, I'm kind of angling it towards the top. So I don't have to do all of that in the collaring where it doesn't have the same compression and ability to get that um, with the inside. It's just bracing on the inside and pulling with an angle in will help kind of additional compression. Okay. So now that is how I want it. I'm gonna collar just to make this more emphasized with the bottom of my pinky and the rest of my hands are kind of cupping it in. And I'm going very, very slowly, kind of in sections. So I brought it in a little bit. I wanna be very careful of this part getting too wet and thin. So you can use a sponge to dry it out. Um, often I'll kind of go over it with a rib tool as well. before I collar it in again. Just really careful of this zone, where it, right where it kind of curves in and shifts so we can give that a little extra, you don't wanna be squeezing it, but mostly just kind of picking up that slip so that it doesn't just like soak through and become a super vulnerable spot. using just that bottom part cupping that in and now that I have it at this stage I'll focus a little bit more on the form so if I want I can kind of go in and do a pre-trim at the base so I don't have to trim that later with my throwing stick. I like to do this because it's easier to see the form a little bit better and how I will think about trimming it. It also takes off some of the extra weight that's hard to pull up without it getting saggy. just toss that aside or even toss it right into your reclaim. And then from here, we can take off that extra slip, manipulate my form a little bit. And this is basically with whatever rib tool is your per personal favorite. ideal world, I would have this rib tool with just a little bit more flex to it. Okay. Now I'm going to just focus on that centered part, adding a little compression. I'm going to do a mini throw on this rim. so that it's a little bit more dramatic. I will cut in. with that part just to ensure that it is not too floppy. If your rim gets a little bit off, you can just go with your needle tool and just kind of cut and recompress that rim 
things so that it's nice and smooth. So basic bottle, the rest is kind of cleaning up and going with your rip tool, but I hope that this was an informative demo for you and exciting to kind of see the wheel again. All right, talk to you soon.